Hello and welcome to a DFS strategy video for the 2023 fall season swing event, the Zozo Championship. My name is Eric and here at Sweet Spot DFS, it's all about trying to hit the optimal lineup every single week. And in this fall season stretch of events, kind of did away with the preview video and just stuck to the strategy video. So basically all I'm going to be doing is kind of lumping it all together doing a little bit of a course and tournament preview uh, to go along with the whole sweet spot process, looking at the bucket system, looking at the marquee tee times, and then building lineups towards the end of the stream. So if you have two to four golfers you'd like me to build lineups around, let me know, especially if, as I go through this. If you just spot two guys you want me to build lineups around, I will certainly do so. Uh, leave them in the chat. It will be, I'll just go off the list. First ones I put them up there. You will. I'll start with you. Uh, but before we get in this video, let's go ahead and give you some uh, giveaway reminders. I like to do a weekly and monthly giveaway. So if you are participating on this channel, which is being subscribed, commenting, just like Eight Game did. Cheers to you, sir. Uh, commenting here, commenting on the replay version of this video. That's how you get entries into the giveaway. Not only the weekly, but also the monthly. So it, it doubles down. If you participate this week, not only will you go into the weekly giveaway uh, next week, but you'll also go into the monthly giveaway that I run the first, basically the first video that I do the next month. That's when I'm doing the monthly giveaway. I just did it uh, last week. And Gabe, Gabe Brown, who uh, who not only won the weekly, he also won the monthly giveaway. He uh, was incredibly, there he is. What's going on, Gabe? Uh, incredibly lucky to have won both. Gabe, I still have to send out your shirt. I was thinking you already had a shirt that was sent to you. Do you just want to bank those dollars and maybe get a sweatshirt? I don't know if you wear sweatshirts in your uh, neck of the woods, but we certainly could do that if you wanted to. I'm also not sure if I have any more larges left. I'm going to be honest. So entirely up to you. I will get some merchandise drop somewhere in the future. So, um, okay, cool. Yeah, we'll bank it. So just, just remember, I owe you 15 and any of the other, uh, giveaways that I do, we can just put it towards it. Sweatshirt costs $40. So we can just continuously add your, your winnings to that. And then I'll just send you a sweatshirt for free, uh, somewhere down the road. So anyways. There we go. We got uh, the monthly giveaway winner last week here in the chat. Obviously, it pays to participate. Um, with that being said, let's go ahead. Eight game. I think I might have, I might have a three x. I, I, it, I know I have a two x. I'm, I might have a three x. But anyways, like I said, let's go ahead and get into our giveaways. Actually, just one giveaway this week. It's a weekly giveaway. So we have 13 total entries. Gabe was the only person that uh, left a comment on the replay. So basically what the replay is, once I end this broadcast, it gets posted to YouTube as if you could rewatch it. So if you go there and you comment on that video, you'll get an additional entry. I'm a bit choppy. Eight games, six, eight, two seventy-five. I don't know. I, I I see the bit frames on my my end. It looks pretty good. Anyone else? Um, is my is my stream choppy for anyone else? Let me know. Uh, but we have thirteen total entries in the weekly giveaway. I already added those to the monthly giveaway, so I will go ahead and add those to the monthly giveaway once we do that next month. So 13 total entries. Let's see who wins. Jim Lemoyne. Jim has won this before. So congratulations, Jim. $5 are yours. I will send them to you. I already have your details since you've won before. And just to uh, show you guys that this is not rigged, I just go ahead and hit this a couple times. It's just uh, an autumn. Uh, it's a randomizer. So we I built in some code to randomize that. So congratulations, Jim. I will get you your $5. I'll probably send that out tonight or tomorrow. One of the two. 
one other actually okay one other monetary giveaway that i have is is prize picks if you're in a state that allows prize picks to be played if you use the link in the description to sign up it will already put that sweet spot promo code in the promo code section uh and if you put 20 dollars in your account while signing up i will give you your 20 dollars back that way you can play it for free plus prize picks will match your deposit up to 100 dollars just a heads up every it doesn't matter who you use or what you use it's a promo code uh Price picks is going to match your deposit so there isn't any fancy like hey if you use my promo code you're gonna get a hundred dollars they're gonna do it regardless i'm the only person that i've heard of the only channel that i've heard of that's gonna give you additional money so twenty dollars if you sign up using the promo code sweet spot again there's a link in the description those are all the monetary giveaways i am also providing a cheat sheet so if you want to go ahead and follow along with me you certainly can let me put that on the screen right now so everything that i'll be covering in this video you can use the cheat sheet in the link or in the description the link that's in the description click that you come here all the filters that i will be using you can use if you want to make this your own just go to the file menu and make a copy that way you can use this you can actually modify this however you'd like um but yeah you can follow along with me and then I'm also providing an optimizer. So I will be building lineups later on in the stream. If you'd like me to build you a lineup, give me two to four golfers you'd like me to build lineups around. And I use two to four because it kind of matches the marquee tee times that I'll be covering a little bit later. So if you want me to build some lineups for you, drop the golfers in the, uh, in the live chat and I will build lineups for you later. So this is also available to you. All you have to do is be subscribed and then email me right there. Sweetspotdfs at gmail.com. Let me know that you would like to use the optimizer. I do have my email up right now. So if you want it, I can send it to you uh, whenever you'd like. So those are all the giveaways, all the giveaway reminders. Uh, let's see if I can catch up with chat. <laughs> What's going on, Paul? I heard Anna said that you might, you might be joining. Um... And eight games says the the broadcast is perfect for him. Cool, and the first the first duo, sure. I imagine which Kim is that? Um, you want Kadira and Kim? I'll we'll figure it out when we get there. But you will be the first uh, lineup to build, so I'll remember that. Okay, let's start this. Let's start this uh, portion of the stream off with kind of a tournament and course preview now usually i like to start this out by going to the tournament fact sheets but there are no tournament fact sheets for the zozo championship and that's because this event is in japan and the reason that there's no tournament fact sheets is because the gcsaa the organization that we get those fact sheets from they only provide tournament fact sheets for golf courses that are in america uh, or any other um, organization that that joins with them. I can't remember. I think the Genesis Scottish Open. I only say that because I think the Genesis uh, Genesis Scottish Open had tournament fact sheets. I could be wrong. I know they will always have tournament fact sheets for golf courses in the continental U.S., but I am not sure if the Genesis Scottish Open was included as well because the RNA, the Royal and Ancient Golf Club. Uh, they might uh, work in tandem with the GCSAA, but either way, I don't have it. Uh, the greens here are bent grass greens, so if you go to the cheat sheet, you're going to find out that, well, I have to, man, keep forgetting to update this. <laughs> the I, I updated on my side, but I forgot to update it on the cheat sheet, so let me go ahead and just do this. We're using bent grass stats. For the grass you might have heard that the fairways the rough all that other stuff is zoysia grass i don't have zoysia grass like i haven't kept track of that primarily because a lot of zoysia kind of came in like there weren't a lot of golf courses on tour dating back from 2013 on that were using zoysia so i never tracked it because you know you can get away with one or two events a year 
not really looking at at the grass stats but the most important grass stat or the imp the most important surface to consider is the greens or are the greens so bent grass that's what we're using that's what i have loaded into the cheat sheet i also have it loaded into my own spreadsheet uh, when we go over this and it's also kind of baked into my rankings so we're using bent grass so if you're you if you're doing any of your own research i think it's important to use bent grass more than half well not more than half but almost half of the shots that the pga tour players will be uh having will be on bent grass because that's usually your putting stats so uh bent grass greens zoysia everything else if you're on a site that you can research zoysia grass certainly do so uh, if you had a hundred points to weigh in i'd probably put like one or two points on zoysia honestly it is a bit different so the ball stands a little bit taller on zoysia than it does any of the other grasses uh, it's similar to me like bermuda grass so if you maybe wanted to use bermuda you could but i probably wouldn't do that um just some ideas so bent grass greens zoysia everything else the golf course is pretty uh short seven thousand yards it's a par 70. i do kind of have this little shot shape arrangement this is basically you know if we wanted to have the most birdie opportunities possible these shot shapes are going to help get our golfers in those positions to make birdies so i have a little summary box down here let me scroll down a little bit so you guys can see it better basically what i'm saying is off the tee four holes i think draws like hitting a draw off the tee for a right-handed golfer so a right to left shot shape is important a fade just one of those holes and i actually have zero approach shots that require a draw or would benefit for a draw and i have four that uh, would benefit from a fade so basically all this is telling us is shot makers golfers that can shape the sh uh, golf ball both ways probably more beneficial towards them if you had to kind of lean one way or the other whether it's a draw or a fade i would go with fades so remember, this is right-handed golfers, so lefty would draw it. You'd want to find a, a left-handed golfer that drew the golf ball more so, than, more so than fade. But I think with just four four shots off the tee and four shots in approach, it's not going to matter all that much. You could have any shot shape uh, and be just fine. So that's kind of what I have for the golf course. Now with the tournament, it's a limited field. If you didn't already know that... Here's me reminding you, it's a limited field. There are 78 golfers in the field, so there's no cut, which is nice. Uh, getting your six to six through is gonna be 100% unless, you know, they withdraw, which is possible. What, uh, which golfer do you think of all the golfers in the field have has the highest risk of withdrawing? I'm sure most of you guys already know, um, but yeah. I would say that guy is the only person you really have to worry about. I don't think anybody else in the field we have to worry about a withdraw. Uh, but yeah, if you didn't already know, it's it's Hideki. You gotta you gotta worry about Hideki withdrawing from the tournament. Um, what's going on, Josh? Just just saw you in chat, and Gabe goes, "Okay, when you get to it, can I get it? Okay, a lineup." <laughs> it's good to have tryhards in the in the chat gabe all right so again you know limited field event 78 golfers our strength of field is actually 262 which is pretty great and i had told you guys last week that i was going to update the fedex cup rankings to um to what was the end of the 2023 season but then i thought about it I don't know if it really makes sense to because this is the 2023 fall season event so 2023 isn't really over per se and i it's technically the same golfers from last year playing i it, i just i'm gonna leave it as is and then i'm going to update it once the actual new season happens so these are 2022 fedex cup rankings I don't think it really harms anything. I think a lot of the golfers, maybe not Ricky, 
per se, but Ricky's number two in my rankings with the terrible FedEx Cup uh, uh, ranking. So, like I said, I don't think it really hurts that much. It's not really incorporated into the the model all that much. It does give a little boost to certain golfers uh, and provide a little bit more strength of field points. So, just throwing that out there, letting you guys know what I'm doing with the FedEx Cup. But yeah, 262, strength of field, that's pretty strong for a limited field event, considering I do have the Shriners up. Um, the Shriners strength of field was 175. So, and that was a full field event. That's 132 golfers. This one, 78, 262. And that's primarily because it's kind of a, it's not necessarily a marquee event, but it's definitely one that has a little prestige to it. The only event that's being played in Japan uh, purse is pretty big, I believe, if I remember correctly. So, that's probably why people are playing here. What's going on, Charlie like Harden? Josh says, I don't think Hideki will withdraw, not in Japan. Yeah, but that's the thing is, it, yeah, he, has he withdrawn here before? He has not. He has won this and finished second one time, so... I okay, I agree with you, but I'm also not putting it past Hideki for withdrawing. It, it's definitely possible. So with that, I with all that being said, I think that's pretty much the end of the the golf course and tournament preview. Let's go ahead and jump into pass optimal in GPP winning lineups. This is of course me taking a look at the optimal lineups dating all the way, way all the way back uh, from 2020, which is actually the beginning of this event's history. So we've had GPP winning lineups and optimal lineups from the inception of this tournament. So starting in 2020, your optimal lineup left $900 on the table. It had Mr. Eldrick Woods at $9,300, Hideki Matsuyama at 10.7, Horschel at 77, Connors at 72, Howell the third at 73, and Ryan Palmer at 69. I like this this build. It's a 197776. And I'm I'm going to be saying it like that throughout this 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 segment. If you've if you've never been here before, what I usually like to advocate for is building your lineups that start with a 10k golfer, a 9k golfer, an 8k golfer, two 7k golfers, and a 6k golfer. And the reason being like 20% of GPP winning lineups have that uh, salary build. The next nearest one is like 11%. It's it's crazy the disparity between the, the most popular GPP winning lineup and then the second most. When it comes to optimal lineups, it's like 16% of your optimal lineups are 10.98776. Then it's followed by 10.98777 and then 10.9877, or uh, I'm sorry, 10.98766. But it all, starts with 10987. This one does not have an 8K golfer, but we do have an 8K golfer that finished third with Sung JM, as you can see up there, and Benny Ann at 8700. So the optimal lineup didn't have an 8K golfer, but we had two 8K golfers inside the top 10. So just keep that in mind. Your GPP winning lineup was 11-5 Rory, 9-3 Tiger, 7-7-6-7. Seven, seven, seven. So same thing, 10, 9, 7, 7, 7, 6. 2021, your optimal lineup left $200 on the table, and that started with a $9,400 golfer, 10, 6, 81, 72, 71, 72. So there you go, you got your 10, 9, 8, 7, 7, 7 start, and that was your optimal lineup, by the way, perfect lineup. Your GPP win lineup was very similar, uh, but it started with a 10, 9, 8, Seven, seven, seven. There you go. Ten, nine, eight, seven, seven, seven. Again, very, very common um, lineup build, and that's an easier one to digest because usually trying to find a six K golfer is very difficult. But as you can see, there was three six K golfers right here that you could have chose. Now they weren't in the optimal lineup, but they were inside the top ten. And I guarantee you, if you would have included one of them, you could have won a GPP. Uh, going to 2022, your optimal lineup left $1,400 on the table. And that optimal started with Hideki at 10. 
Cameron Tringali at 92. We actually had an 8k golfer, Matt Wallace. 776. There you go. 198776. Now it was on the cheaper end. It left $1,400 on the table, which is very difficult to follow through with, but it still had your 198776 in it. Your GPP winning lineup, the $5, left $0 on the table. So if you're wondering, a lot of times the easy piece of advice that you see a lot of the top streamers, top podcasters talk about when it comes to building lineups is on a, in a limited field event, it is wise to leave a bunch of money on the table. Well, your GPP winning lineup in 2022 did not uh, use up all 50,000 of the salary. And it's these golfers that are highlighted in blue. It's Hideki Matsuyama at 10-3, Sebastian Munoz at 7-3, Matt Wallace at 8,000, Mackenzie Hughes at 9, and uh, Sam Ryder at 67, and KH Lee at 87. So just to actually go back through that, that was a 10K golfer, a 9K golfer, two 8K golfers, a 7, and a 6. So, that left no money on the table. Now, I created a more realistic lineup because leaving $1,400 on the table isn't really easy to get to. The realistic is just trying to get as many golfers inside the top 5 or top 10 to put in your lineup as possible. And the one that I came up with left $200 on the table. That was a 10-3 Matsuyama, 92, Tringali, 8,000, Wallace, 777. So 10, 9, 8, 7, 7, 7. So we're kind of seeing a trend. 10, 9, 8, 7, 7, 7 seems to be the right way to build lineups. Uh, Paul, are you talking about uh, the, the Tour Championship, 75 million? I'm not sure what you, I don't know what you're ref referring to. Uh, going to 2023, the optimal lineup in 2020, oh my God, left a ton of money on the table, $2,100 on the table. Again, I don't advocate for that because that's that's getting, that's being too cute with building your lineups and you're, you're opening up way, like so many more combinations of lineups to be built because you're including more of a player pool to try to hit that specific lineup. So anyways, your optimal was 89, 76, 74, 77, 95, and 68. So that's a 9K, 8K, three sevens, and a six. So we're excluding a 10K golfer, but you pretty much have that core lineup build of 10, 9, 8, 7, 7, 6 in there. Had an, actual, an extra 7K golfer uh, to go along with your six, nine, and eight. The GPP winning lineup uh, left $200 on the table, so not leaving a lot of money on the table once again. And that started with an 8K golfer, 7K, 9K, 6K, 10K, and a 6K. So just to repeat that in a different order, that's a 10K golfer in Xander, a 9K golfer in Victor Hovland, an 8K golfer in uh, Keegan Bradley, $7,400 Ricky Fowler, $6,800 Hayden Buckley, and $6,400 Rio Histatune. Uh, that's two 6Ks. Remember I had said that is the second most, or that's actually the third most common optimal lineup build is a 1098766, and that's what we have here. So lots of different ways to build. I think starting with a 10987 seems pretty smart. If you wanted to go with three sevens, that seems to be more, more common at this event. But I think if you just want to mess around with three sevens, two sevens and a six, or one seven and two sixes, I think starting 10, 9, 8, uh, 10, 9, 8, 7 is the way to go though. Oh, no worries, Paul, no worries. All right, so those were our pass optimal and GPP winning lineups. I'm gonna go right into the marquee tee times which is rank ordering the best groups in the field. I'd go to the, the bucket system, but I'll leave that here uh, be right before we start building lineups, just to give you guys a little bit of an idea of where you'd like to start your lineups uh, when building. But the marquee tee times, I have tracked this since the 2019 PGA Championship, so this is two plus years that I've, I've been doing this. Um, and what I found out is 90% of the time, we have somewhere between two to four golfers from the groups that I'm highlighting right now, the top nine groups in the field that are paired up together. 
like I said, 90% of the time we find two to four golfers in the optimal lineup. And a lot of times we find it also in the GPP winning lineup. So I've got nine groups highlighted right now. And I want you to select two to four golfers from here. And again, you can do this on the cheat sheet. There's a link in the description to get to the cheat sheet. You can go ahead, throw the filters on there and you can just filter out by, or filter by group rank. So column O on the cheat sheet. So I have mine, top to bottom. Group one is Ricky Fowler, Hideki Matsuyama, and the defending champion, Keegan Bradley. That's kind of a no-brainer. Those are three really good golfers together. The 10K, a 9K, and another 9K. Uh, I think starting here is kind of a smart idea, and I won't lie, I'm really liking Ricky Fowler this week at $10,000. Group two is Colin Morikawa, Adam Scott, and KH Lee. I really don't have a bias here, and KH Lee is a really good 6K value. I do like Colin Morikawa. I do like Adam Scott. And honestly, in the 6K, 6K range, KH Lee, I don't necessarily care. For, like, I'm not going to go to my way to play him. But if he does land in my lineups, I've got no issue playing him whatsoever. Group three is JJ Spawn, Tom Hoagie, Nick Taylor. I have, I mean, I really have nothing to say about this group. I like all of them, and especially in the 7K range, I think they're all really good values. Next group, we have Xander Shoffley, Taylor Moore, and Kurt Kitayama. Now, Xander's my top ranked golfer in this field. He's my, in the sweet spot model, he's number one. But Taylor Moore is 22 and Kurt Kitayama is 32, and that's why their group rank is as bad as it is. But I actually don't mind if you wanted to choose any of these guys to, to do so. And actually this week I might I might consider four golfers. Like I go in between two to four. However, a lot of good golfers are in these marquee tee times, and you'll see you'll see some more like interesting names. Adam Spenson. Adam Shank, Lee uh, Lee Hodges, they're not they're no slouches. I don't mind playing them at all, any of them. And at 8K range, you know, like I think I would much rather play Tom Hoagie at $7,800 than Adam Svensson at 82. In my in my opinion, same kind of applies for JJ Spawn. However, it's only like a $300 $400 difference, not a big deal. And Lee Hodges kind of matches Nick Taylor. Uh, to me, they're kind of interchangeable. Although I would definitely give more of a boost towards Nick Taylor than Lee Hodges. Uh, by the way, Nick Taylor is number 13 in my model, whereas Lee Hodges is number 30. The group after that is Sungjae, Sahith Thagala, and Kaito Anishi. Uh, I have no idea who Kaito is, but we have Sungjae and Sith together, and I think those are really good plays as well, or good considerations. It's unfortunate that they're paired up with him, because if you look... You know, they kind of have the best making for the best group. Number four in my model, number three in my model, with number 74. <laughs> like, uh, I think they're getting the short end of the stick. Unless Kaido and uh, Onishi is a really good golfer. Obviously, uh, Japan, this, this tournament's in Japan. They have so many sponsors. Uh, I shouldn't say so many. I think they've got four sponsorships that they can give to Japanese-born players or on the Japanese tour. So Kaido must be one of the better golfers on that tour, but you know, I don't know. At $6,100, that is, that's just, it's a lotto ticket if you're gonna play them, which obviously that's what this GPP business is all about. So I would just much rather play Sung Jay or Sith Lagala. The next group after that's Cam Davis, Vince Norman, and Nick Hardy. I think my model must be I don't know. I, I, I don't know if I really agree with a lot of the rankings here. I think this group is a lot better than what my group ranking is giving it. So like, I don't know. I, I really like Cam Davis. I think Cam Davis, as long as the break between the last tournament, which is the RSM Classic, and the next tournament for the new year is... Uh, the Century Tournament Champions. I'm excluding the Hero uh, World Challenge, by the way. But from the RSM to the Century Tournament of Champions is like a month. As long as he doesn't get like slowed down and, and, and actually improves his game, I think Cam Davis next year is going to be a world beater. 
it, like what he's kind of showing with his game as of late, I think he's almost at that point now where he could have a bad round or a bad tournament and still finish inside the top 10. Like he, I think he finished 11th last or 7th last week at the Shriners and he didn't look all that great Thursday, Friday. So I, I really like Cam Davis and Vince Norman's one on, on the PJ Tour. It was an alternate event, but still really good. Uh, and Nick Hardy is also one. I guess the only person that hasn't won on the PJ Tour is Cam Davis in this group. So I really like this group. I, I think this is a, I, the, the model's just not giving it any love. The next two groups are kind of like, I always color these really light green because they're honorary mentions. I do nine groups because the optimizer allows me to put nine groups in there and I haven't found reasons to put any other conditionals in there. If you know about the optimizer, you know that you only have so many lines of code that you can put in there. Uh, and I can't do more than nine groups. I used to have 10 groups for the, the marquee tee times, but nine groups works perfect. And these last two groups are kind of like no big deal. Like I, I'm not going to get caught up with trying to find one of these guys to put in my lineups. However, I think if you wanted to go with any of them, I, Michael Kim, I got no issue this week playing in Michael Kim. It's a limited field event, no cut, like go on with Michael Kim. Dylan Wu I like, Sam Ryder I really like. Uh, the only person I really don't like is Keith Mitchell. What was his last event? I can't remember. Uh, let's see. Keith Mitchell played the Sanderson Farms Championship. That's right. Sanderson Farms Championship. He missed the cut. Like a bum. Like, I remember watching him at the 3M Open live, like in person. That guy couldn't care less. Like, I don't know what his motivations are. But he kind of just walks around like he's a grumpy old man anyways. And I know he's, he's tied into business dealings. I don't even know if he's... He cares about golf all that much, honestly. He just doesn't, he doesn't push out that vibe. Now, that could just be nonsense, which it probably is. And it'd probably be a good place to pe uh, play Keith Mitchell. We don't have to worry about a cut this week. At $8,300, that's, that's a tough pill to swallow. And I think everyone's feeling the same way I did about the Sanderson Farms Championship and how he burned me. I'm sure he burned a lot of you guys if you played him. So maybe it is the time to play Keith Mitchell. Maybe... Maybe he realized, you know what? Missing the cut at the Santa Far Sanderson Farm Championship is kind of embarrassing. Like, I'm not going to do, you know, I'm going to go out and play really well at the Zozo. Maybe. I don't know. Austin Eck wrote, he's been, for, for a rookie, uh, and especially showing as much talent as he has in the past, this year's been kind of a disappointment for Austin Eck wrote. I can't remember, did he get injured? He might have got injured, and that's probably why he hasn't played very well. Uh, but I do like Austin Eckroat. Love Austin Eckroat. And then Nate Lashley. Hey, you could do worse at $7,000. Maybe, maybe not. Actually, I don't know. You probably could do worse. <laughs> or you, maybe you can't do worse. Uh, I do like Na Nate Lashley. I don't mind. So with the golfers that I've talked about, if you can find two to four golfers that aren't playing in a group together to build lineups around, I will most certainly do that. Uh, and if you want some proof, last week at the Shriners, I already have it up here. There are three golfers that were in the optimal lineup. Now, I've told you don't pair golfers up together. And what do you see here? Tom, Kim, Nick Taylor paired up together in the optimal lineup together. So it breaks that mold. However, last week, if we look at the sweet spot optimal, which I see a... Uh, uh, Ryan, Ryan Henson in the chat. Uh, he wanted to, he wanted to know right away. I, I didn't have it for him. I didn't have it ready. However, the uh, Sweet Spot Optimal scored 721.5 points and the GPP winning lineup scored 715.5 points. So it beat the GPP winning lineup by six points. And honestly, when like the whole motto here is to aim towards the optimal lineup if we miss and hit the GPP winning lineup instead. Perfect. You know, aim small, miss small. That's the whole premise. Sweet Spot Optimal beats the GPP winning lineup, but it does not match the optimal. The optimal scored 738. So there was a 17 point difference between the optimal and the Sweet Spot Optimal. Um, so 
we still, I mean, we still call it a victory. The Sweet Spot Optimal beats that one. And if we go back to the marquee tea times for the Shriners Children's Open, JT Poston, 10,000, Tom Kim, 10,9. Those were the only two golfers from the marquee tea times that we put in our lineups uh, for the Sweet Spot Optimal. So it worked out there. I can't remember if we had it for the Zozo last year. Let me double check. I think we did. Actually, we had one optimal lineup golfer, and that was Victor Hovland. But yeah, two golfers that were in the GPP winning lineup. So there's a little consolation prize there. Xander and Victor. So maybe we just find two golfers from the Marquee Tee Times. Oh, by the way, we did have two golfers playing together in the optimal down here in group 10. So who knows? We'll see. 2022, do we have... Oh, I do have Marky Tea Times here as well. Let's take a look. There we go. This is better. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Never mind. I did it different. Okay, hold on. Man, things change so much. You guys remember this? When I used to highlight them this color? <laughs> trying to remember what it was. Well, we've got one down here. The, uh, because the dark green indicated the best groups in the in the tournament and then the light green was the second best groups yeah, we only had one optimal lineup golfer there so anyways yeah that's that's hard too hard to, to figure out again it's like 90 percent pretty close to 90 percent finding two golfers two to four golfers from the marquee tee times to put in your lineups to hit the optimal lineup so We'll continue to, to do that. And plus, we have a, a good amount of golfers here. Like, do we not think Xander, Ricky, Sungjae, or Colin Morikawa can't be in a GPP winning lineup or even the optimal lineup? Good chances at least one of those guys do. And some of their uh, supporting cast here, I think, are pretty good too. So those were the marquee tee times. I'm not going to go over the sweet spot ranks. They're already, uh, if you want to check out the sweet spot ranks again, there's a cheat sheet uh, that I'm providing link in the description to get there. All you got to do is throw the filter on the DraftKings filter, and then you can sort top to bottom. Uh, you can see the rankings. Those rankings go into the marquee tee times and the scoring, the modeling for that is over here. Column CY to DR, you can find the points that I'm putting towards. And if you have any questions as to the stats that I'm using, uh, you can email me, but I've gone through that so many times throughout my videos that you could probably just check the last year's video and see the exact same stats that I put in uh, to this year's model. Okay, let me catch up with chat really quick, and then I'm going to get into the bucket system, and then we'll start building lineups after that. So uh, get your two to four golfers ready, and I will build lineups for you. Joshua Maz goes... Taylor is 13th in your model. Can't do it. Unlucky number. Who is 9th? Uh, looks like Egan, the defending champion Bradley, is number 9. Ryan goes, Gabe, I'm not a tryhard. I'm a winner. Is, are those shots fired, Ryan? You, you firing shots at uh, Gabe? What for? By the way, Ryan, Ryan won the Pat Mayo open not too long ago or what like cool 7500 bucks that was pretty good paul goes 13 has always been super lucky for me go hard on 13 josh well there you go josh some calling you out nick taylor gotta do it charlie Harden, i needed that cut line to stay at minus two i did too man uh i think a lot of us needed minus two who is your who's your main guy that brought you down it was probably the same one for me too uh, Mitchell burns you, Josh. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I've been burned in the past too, Josh. Keep the hope. Stay strong. What? Oh my God. Uh, Ryan goes, heck yeah. I wanted to know right away. I was hoping I beat the sweet spot optimal. Still scored 61 points better than... It's still... Yeah. I mean, I think Ryan, you probably scored 50 points better than my lineup, if I'm being honest. I can't remember. I think you scored 660. I think my best one was 610 or something like that. Okay. Now that we caught up with chat, 
Try Car. Oh, it was Hubbard. Mark Hubbard. It wasn't okay. Mark Hubbard wasn't my guy, but I did have some Mark Hubbard. Let's see. Actually, I'm I'm very curious. I kind of want to see who were the golfers that I needed at minus two. Gordon was one of them. Gordon was in a lineup that was doing really good. S same with Ben Martin. I needed Ben Martin, Adam Shank. Uh, that was it. So Adam Shank, Ben Martin, and Will Gordon kind of did it for me. I don't remember having any good lineups with Mark Hubbard in there. I know I was playing some Doug Gim. I don't remember how many good ones I had there. Did you guys watch to see uh, Lexi Thompson? She was two under with like eight holes left to play. Unfortunate, like that would have been cool if she would have made the cut. She would have been the first uh, woman golfer in 60 years since 19, like the 1950s, so 70 years, something like that, to have made the cut on the PJ Tour. That'd have been cool. She played way better than I thought she was going to. Um, it was fun, it was fun watching. Okay. Let's go ahead. Let's get into the buckets. We're going to go do the, the anchor buckets, which if you're unfamiliar with this, basically what the bucket system does is it looks at all of the top 10 leaderboards for the Zozo Championship, and it pulls out the most successful stats to build your lineups around. That's essentially what the bucket system is. And what I like to do, what I call the anchor buckets, are the for sure buckets that you want to play at least one golfer from. So how I figure that out is I have these projection columns here, max projection, projection, min projection. I like to go into this max projection, filter by condition, greater than or equal to two. And what this is going to help us do is basically make sure the minimum is always one. Now, because I kind of have access to this and I haven't given it to you guys yet, I have this other max projection column over here, um, which helps me kind of figure out, it's what I call like a conservative max projection. And why I call it a conservative max projection is it actually brings into account the sweet spot ranks and puts them all into a pool together. And like what I do for strength of field points uh, and the best golfers in my model get put towards this projection. Again, last week I called it in beta and I, it's just, it's been working out, you know, recently it's been working out most of this year. I should just add it to the projections and just be done with it. But I kind of like giving you both of the options just to be like, Hey, you could do this or also take into consideration this one. So basically what I did here is the same thing as I, I didn't filter out by condition. You're not going to have access to this. I just removed three buckets. I, let me show you what buckets those are. That way um, you can just maybe ignore them when you're looking at them. Last week one, so golfers who top 20 last week, the trooper or the, the raw projections one to three. Now, because this minimum is less than two, Remember, we always round up with our max projection. So 2.02 .02 actually rounds up to three. Our min projection 1.21 goes down to one. And we always want a two point buffer between the max and the min. Because this is less than two, I drop the minimum to zero. And that's a conservative projection. So zero to three is how this would truly look. Uh, and I believe I have this added to the optimizer. Last week ones, there you go, zero to three. So again, if you want access to the optimizer, send me an email right there. I love when I say that and it's right on the screen. Sweetspotdfs at gmail.com. Okay, so those were the buckets I'm excluding from the anchor buckets. Otherwise, we've got a ton. Personally, I love when it's like somewhere between four to six buckets to talk about. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna rifle through this. I'm not gonna go, um, I'm not going to talk about every or each of the buckets. I'll let you go look at them on the cheat sheet, but I do want to look at last year ones because this is usually a good bucket to grab golfers from. So last year ones are golfers who top 20 this event last year. It tends to be a, a successful bucket always to grab golfers from because it kind of provides that course history element to it. So golfers who did well here last year, 
bring a little bit of that positive energy that they had from last year into this year and tend to do well. So the projection was one to four, believe it or not. Uh, 1.95, that rounds down to one. 3.24 rounds up to four. So it's one to four. You want to grab one to four golfers from here. And I don't see a lot of really high priced golfers, but it is worth noting that even if I say one to four, that's what I'm projecting to be inside the top 10. So although I keep saying grab one to four golfers, you might not be able to grab up to four golfers because literally Xander Shoffley, Ricky Fowler, Keegan Bradley, and Sith Thagala could be your four golfers from this bucket that finish inside the top 10. And if that's the case, they're burning $39,300 of your salary. Now, if, if you average that out, it is just over $5,000 that you could play for each of the golfers. And guess what? Our cheapest golfer in the field is $6,000. So you couldn't put together a lineup, these four golfers, but those four golfers could finish inside the top 10. And the projection that I have for this bucket would be true. One to four would be right, but you can't play four golfers. This is something that I've learned throughout the, the years that I've been doing this analysis, where in the beginning, I'm like, ooh, you have to play somewhere between one to four and you should play like three or four. And then you find out up oh, to the 10K golfers that were in that bucket were in the top 10. They made that bucket successful, but you couldn't play both of them. They hit the optimal lineup. And most of the time, it's also in a GPP. You can't do it. So anyways, I think if you wanted to grab two golfers from this bucket, I think it's worthwhile. Uh, and just to look at this bucket a little bit more, we've seen at least two. This minimum here means at least two golfers have been inside the top 10 from this bucket every single year that we've looked at this tournament. Uh, we could even go down to the optimal lineup part of it and see that at least one golfer has been in the optimal lineup from this bucket every single year with a max of two. So perhaps maybe we don't play more than two. However, the projections are here because maybe this year the field that applies to this bucket is better than previous years. You have to always keep that into account as well, because if golfers are really good out of this bucket and they're the best golfers in the field, that means the projection has, you know, the there's a high likelihood that more than two golfers could be in the optimal lineup from this bucket. So keep that in mind. So with that being said, what are your, who are two of your golfers that you like from this bucket? Personally, I like Xander, I like Ricky. I'm probably gonna, like if I'm gonna build lineups, I might build 90% 90, 90 of my lineups with these two guys in it. Uh, not together, it's either or. So it'll be either Xander or it'll be either Ricky. And I'm gonna leave 10% of that for, you know, FOMO reasons, basically. I don't want to have 100% exposure between these two guys in case it doesn't work out because that is a huge possibility. So anyways, I like Xander, I like Ricky. I don't really care for the rest of them, if I'm being honest with you. I don't mind like sprinkling uh, sprinkling in Hayden Buckley, Cam Champ, don't uh, don't sleep on him. Same goes with Joel Damon. Uh, Taylor Moore's kind of an iffy one, I'm not sure. Tom Hoagie I like, I like Adam Shank. Bo Hosler, I don't mind. Same with Emiliano Grillo. I like, I like them all. Let's just say I like all of them, except for probably the Japanese golfers that are in here. Now, Rio was in the optimal lineup last year I think it's the same guy I'm pretty sure it is but the, the spelling of the name is different like the you know like how many Rio Hisatunes are there you can see here there's an extra S in here this Sune I'm not I, I think they're the same guy I'd have to double check but he was he was in the GPP wing lineup. He was in the optimal lineup. He was in the GPP wing lineup. So, hey, it could be another Japanese golfer that finishes inside uh, the GPP wing lineup or the optimal. Could be, could, could happen. But I think I probably put most of my, like I said, 90% of my exposure will be either Xander or Ricky, and I'll pair him up with one of these guys down here. I've got no issue. I just don't know who it is. Uh, Henson, are you in the in the chat? Do you like Adam Shank this week? I know you're kind of a... Uh, you were an Adam Shank truther not too long ago. How, how are you feeling about him this week? 
let's move on so that's one bucket i like to look at now last year's six and last week's six these are golfers who did not play one, well last year's six are golfers who did not play in this event last year and last week six are golfers who did not play in the shriners children's open you can see the projections are pretty high for those i mean you know one one piece that i forgot to do when it came to, when it comes to uh the anchor buckets the bucket totals i forgot i usually like to do 30 or less so we can just kick those ones out easy there we go now we don't have to talk about them uh an interesting bucket course history ones by the way for the other two buckets i just kicked out you saw what the projections were you can also see that on the cheat sheet go check it out uh slack your golfers um i want to say responsibly but obviously we all need to do that too <laughs> uh with caution let's just say that of course the string ones one to twenty the projection is one to three uh and what we want to do is just make sure there's no active filters on here go into the course history bucket just select the one so course history one look at that we have xander which we've already looked at uh he's in bucket one for last year same applies for keegan bradley sith agala bo hosler and these four golfers right here so there's going to be some overlap so if you did like two of those golfers that were in the last year one bucket well they also apply to the course history one bucket which makes sense. Some of these guys have only played this event once and it was last year. They finished inside the top 20. So they are now in that course history one bucket. Uh, again, Alexander. Xander and Ricky in the 10K range. I don't mind building my lineups around. If you needed a reason to play Xander with Keegan, Sahith, or even Bo Hauser, there you go. You got good reasons, uh, good reasons right there too. Most of these golfers for me, I'm just gonna mix and match. I don't really have a, a strong take one way or the other. Alexander, like I said, and then the rest of them, I'll just play sparingly. Doesn't really matter to me. So that is your course history one bucket. Course history two, that's the next best course history bucket to pull golfers from. These are golfers who average somewhere between the 20th to 40th place uh, position when it comes to the course history you got the remaining 10k golfers in there so another good reason to play ricky fowler but we also have colin morikawa and sung jm there cam davis who i spoke about before with the marquee tee times i really like cam davis hard for me not to consider playing him and i also really like adam scott so adam scott's playing with colin morikawa it's almost a good a good thing to say here um perhaps if you're not going with Colin Morikawa lineups, it might be advantageous to go with like a Xander lineup or a Ricky lineup and pair them with Adam Scott. Like if you wanted to, re like if you need someone to pair with Adam Scott, like if Adam Scott's one of your top guys you want to play, pairing him up with the guys that I just said might be the way to go. But this bucket is loaded with good golfers. Uh, even some 6K golfers down here, I think, you know, they would fill up your lineup pretty good. And I'm projecting somewhere between two to four golfers to finish inside the top 10 from this bucket. So I think it's it's worthwhile to at least grab two, but you can play up to four. And with the 7K range and the 6K range down here with some good golfers in it, I think it's probably pretty easy to build lineups with these golfers. Let's see here. Uh, recent form six, I'm not going to count. These are golfers with no recent form. I don't know if that's that's really a th thing so just to show you what this looks like when you look at the top guys you see that they didn't play i mean my recent form goes back the last seven calendar weeks in the last seven calendar weeks we had three total events that golfers could have played in and the top five guys now xander was in the Ryder cup and that's right here i'm not i didn't track stats for that i don't even know how to include that in the bucket system because it's a, a team event it's a match play event hard to even i don't know i have no idea how to put that into the bucket system and make it work out so i excluded it but colin Murakawa was also there so too was ricky fowler those three golfers were in the Ryder cup so they have played since 
Now you could judge based off of their performance there if you should or should not play them, but personally, I don't care. Uh, that's why this bucket for me is difficult to gauge. So again, the bucket that I'm talking about are is the recent form six, which are did not plays. And the reason that's hard to gauge is now you're also grabbing in um, these these Japanese golfers that have not played on the PGA Tour, which I'm not comfortable just saying, yeah, no, these guys are equal to the ones, you know, at the top of the salary leaderboard. They aren't. I guess there's only four of them that you really have to kind of ignore. But there are just some good golfers here regardless. I'm, all, I'm not looking at the right. I'm not looking at the right one. I'm sorry. Recent form sixes. So yeah, yeah, you have a ton now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven Japanese golfers there. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Thirteen Japanese golfers. So they're not really adding anything to that strength of field portion i don't think you even consider them even in the same breath as these other pga tour golfers up here you i think you just largely ignore them and quite frankly what is the projection for this bucket it's one to four now it says two to two to four here but uh since this the max the conservative max projection is three that means the minimum automatically has to be one so when you look at this grabbing one of these guys i mean we've already talked about xander obviously i've, I've already talked about ricky they're kind of like they they fall in line with those other buckets so i don't even think it's a bucket you have to worry about because you're naturally going to grab one of these golfers based off of the other buckets that we just talked about uh, i'm also not going to talk about salary like the 7k range just so you know i think it's worthwhile to play one or two 7k golfers and we also saw that during the optimal and GPP winning lineup portion of this video, where we, we've seen at least one 7K, if not two, if not three in the optimal, the GPP, or even the realistic optimals that I, I created. So keep all that in mind. And then strokes gain buckets. I don't even know if I should even talk about, I, I, I don't think it really matters. I don't even know, do I have? Strokes in one, three. Okay, so they're all built into the optimizer. Again, if you want this, email me at sweetspotdfs at gmail.com. I'll send it to you. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to talk about these projections. I don't think it's it really matters all that much. I mean, it does. It's part of the bucket system, but I'm just not. I guess this is the thing I kind of like to look at the optimal lineups. Normally we see 7.25 strokes gain one buck uh, golfers in this tournament. We have seven. We normally see 19.25 in the strokes gain three. We have 20. Strokes gain four is different. 12.5 is our average. We have 21 this year. So I don't know how to even make, I don't even know what to make of that. But you can kind of see the averages, what we see in the optimal lineup, what we see in the top five. So you can certainly use that to your advantage when selecting golfers from these buckets. I'm just not going to waste time going into each of them and trying to tell you golfers you should play. So that covers really the strategy portion of this video, really the preview slash strategy. Now we're going to build some lineups. So let me find uh, the first one that we talked about. I believe it was eight game. Let me pin this to the top of the chat. We build some lineups. Depending on the participation, I will either build five lineups for each person, ten lineups, or we'll just continue going. If we if we come across some really good lineups uh, or a good combination of golfers that put together a lot of good lineups, we'll continue building lineups. Uh, for those interested, the lineup you see on the screen is the most optimal lineup that the optimizer selected with no conditions. So it was Ricky Fowler at 10,000, Sith Gala at 9,000, Eric Cole at 8,900, Aaron Rye at 8,000, Sam Ryder at 7,000, and Brandon Wu at 6,900. Just in case you're wondering. 
Let's go ahead and... So he said Kim and Kadira. Which Kim is it? Eight game, if you're in the chat, let me know which eight, uh, which Kim it is. So there's Michael Kim. There's SH Kim. There might be some other Kims down here at the bottom. I'm not sure. Let me know. I need to find Satoshi Kodaira. There he is. 6,200. Saving a lot of money there. Let me know. I'm going to guess it's SH Kim. And 8 game, if you're in the chat, if that's not the case, let me know. Charlie Carden, are you talking about like um, putting additional 6k golfers in your lineup or are you just adding more to your player pool? All right, so the first lineup using SH Kim and Satoshi Kodaira is Xander Shoffley, Ricky Fowler, Aaron Rye, SH Kim, Nick Taylor, and Satoshi Kodaira. Now, Kodaira is going to be the lowest ranked golfer in this lineup, and so the optimizer is trying to kick him out. What I'm going to do is just kick someone else out. Probably going to be Aaron Rye. Actually, no, let's do Nick Taylor. Let's... Let's just make the cheapest, let's just kick the cheapest guy out, not named Satoshi or SH Kim uh, from the lineup. Okay. Yeah, same here, Shally Karn. Uh, I will be adding more to my player pool as well in the 6K range. Ooh, I like this lineup. Ricky Fowler, Adam Scott, Sahith Thagala, Aaron Rye, SH Kim, and Satoshi Kadaira. Here's where we'll kick Aaron Rye out. I don't mind this lineup. I mean, I am personally not going to anchor my lamps around Satoshi Kodaira. I think he's a fine player. He has won a PJ Tour event, believe it or not. But I think that's that's in his rearview mirror, and I don't think he's going to sniff another win. Or probably even a top five, if I'm going to be honest. I might eat my words here at the end of this tournament, but I just I just don't see it. This lineup is, uh, is interesting. Xander Shoffley, Sahith Thagala, Eric Cole, SH Kim, KH Lee, Satoshi Kodaira. Two 6K golfers, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 6. I like that. I like that a lot. Um, I, I actually might just... This will be one of the lineups that I save. I shouldn't say one of them, like I'm not going to save any lineups, but definitely going to limit the amount that I save every single week because by the time I put them into my DraftKings contest, I forget why I even created them. I know I created them for people, but I have no idea how I truly feel about those lineups after I put them in. So anyways, we will kick out KH Lee since he is the low price guy. Eight game again, if you're in the chat, let me know. I'm not sure if it's SH Kim you wanted me to play or Michael Kim. All right, so we have Xander at 10K above, Adam Scott, Sith the Gullet in the 9K range, and then we have a 7,400 SH Kim, 69 Brandon Wu, and 62 Satoshi Kodaira. I like that lineup as well. I don't mind playing two 9K golfers to go with an 11K. That's definitely in... Uh, the realm of possibilities this week for the optimal lineup or a GPP win lineup. Okay. Uh, I need to kick out Fran and Wu.
We have Ricky Fowler, Cam Davis. Okay, so if you're gonna add Cam Davis to these lineups, I I will fall in love real fast. So Fowler, Davis, Thigala, Spawn, which I also like, and then the two guys that we're anchoring our lineups around. That's a real. I like that lineup a lot. It's a really good lineup. The optimizer is doing good things. It's kind of mixing up the player pool a little bit. Xander's showing up a ton. So too is Ricky, and that's fine. Those are two guys I said I wanted to uh, build my lineups around. So I've got no issue with that. We're going to kick out JJ Spawn out of this one. Let's see, who's the next? I think it was Gabe, right? I'm just going to replace your pin message eight game. I'll build you some more lineups here. But I'll put Gabe's up there. I think those are the only two that are in the queue for building lineups. So if anyone's in the chat that want me to build lineups, please give me two golfers to build lineups around. Yep, I think that's it. So Xander, Sahith, Eric Cole, SH Kim, Akshay, and Kadira. I like that lineup. That is different. Shoffley, Thigala, Cole, Kim, Batia, and Kadira. Yeah, I like that one. I'm going to have to figure out, you know, well, first of all, I don't want to play a lot of the Japanese golfers. I couldn't tell you which one you should play over the other one. I know like Kita Nakajima is a guy that has played well on the PGA Tour before. Uh, obviously, uh, uh, obviously, Ryo Hisasune has also played well. Uh, in this event, he was in the GPP we went up last year, so he might be worth consideration. But outside of that, I really don't. I've got no leads on any of them. Xander, Cam Davis, Seth Agala, SH Kim, Matthew Neesmith, and Sato. Yeah, I like this one too. Holy moly. Shot, I'm sure you're still in the chat. Uh, are these lineups looking enticing to you? Xander, Cam Davis, Sithagala, SH Kim, Kevin Yu. Yeah, sign me up, man. I like Kevin Yu. And I like Cam Davis and Sahith. Like, Sahith might be one of the more volatile golfers off the tee, but the guy makes a ton of birdies. So I got no issues with that. Do you, uh, shot, do you know who you're playing? Uh, or. Who are your, your top four golfers that you want to play this week? Not saying you're going to play these guys together, but you have four that you're considering more so than others. Xander, Cam Davis, Sahith Tagala, SH Kim, Harry Hall, Satoshi Kodaira. Okay, I like a lot of these. I think what I'm going to do is probably... I have no issue. I might just try to build a lot of Cam Davis, Xander lineups, because these are looking really good. Fowler, Cam Davis, Adam Scott, Taylor Moore, SH Kim. Okay, I like that one too. Holy moly. That's another good one.
So shot goes, I'm extremely heavy on Sungjae, going back to Hoagie in 7k, skipping most of 8k, but I'm in love with Thigala, Keegan, and most of the 9k range, mixing in cheap... Oh, so you're doing the opposite of kind of what I'm doing. Do you like the idea that this is in Japan, and a lot of the golfers here, it's like their home, their home event, so you're giving them a little bit of a boost? I feel like whoever gets the cheap Japanese golfer right will win. Yeah, that's possible. Can we see that every single year? So... In the, just inside the top 10, no Japanese golfer outside Hideki. And no one in the optimal or the GPP winning lineup. 2021. Inside the top 10... No Japanese golfer, no optimal lineup golfer either. Twenty twenty two. You had Takumi Kanaya to go along with Hideki Matsuyama. Nobody else though. Uh I guess we could probably include Chan Kim. I'm not sure if he's Japanese. I I feel like he's Chinese from what I remember. Just just going off of my memory. Uh, Hiroshi is Japanese. Finish 18th. Not terrible. Yeah, I don't know, man. I, I don't know if I can get there with you. I know Rio was like the one Japanese golfer last year that showed up uh, there's that keto or kita once again kita nakajima uh but no one else I, I mean it's it's decent i i don't know if i can go that route though you always get sucked into the narrative yeah i don't blame you man i'm not i i'm not here to say it's wrong right smart dumb <laughs> I, I couldn't tell you i do like this lineup holy moly fowler davis scott moore sh kim satoshi kadaira did i say that one already i did Hey, by the way, Shot, you won, I believe, last year, or um, last month, uh, month of giveaway. Can't remember off the top of my head, but I think Joanne was in the chat last week and, and said that you were the winner. Because I, I had mentioned it, and obviously what I typically say is like, hey, you know, you need to watch, you need to watch the video to see if you won, and then reach out to me. A lot of that is because if someone just comes in and just like states, you know, just says something to enter the, the giveaway and then never comes back, I'm not going to reward them. Like I want them to reach out to me and say, hey, you won. Um, but it was, I think I asked you a question like, you know, you won the monthly giveaway. We haven't reached our goal of 600 subscribers. So, uh, you know, I don't think you need another t-shirt. Do you want to bank it? So I, I I said to Gabe that he could bank that $15 and then I know you don't uh, really get sweatshirts, but if I got a hat order, I could send you a hat. I think the hats are like $30. So if you want another month to give away, I mean, you, you got the money for a hat just like that. Up to you. I mean, I, I'm cool with that. I'm flexible. All I say or all I'll tell you is keep track of your money that you won. Um, I think Joanne's, you know, uh, Joanne's doing that. She's keeping money. Uh, now, now, uh, Gabe will, and and good. That's. I think it is a really good idea. So, alrighty. I think I'll do one more lineup. This one's enticing. I like Mac Hughes. I've got no issue playing Mackenzie Hughes this week. All right. So that might be seven lineups too many with Satoshi Gadara. That's nine lineups. So I might trim two of those, two of the ones I don't like. 
uh, and just keep the seven. But let's move on. Uh, to Gabe's lineups. And honestly, Shot, if if I don't get any other lineup considerations, I might build lineups for myself on stream, but I'd much rather, like if you want like a couple golfers for me to build lineups around just to see what they look like. Of course, if you don't want to, that's totally fine too. I get the um, superstitious side of things. So if you don't want it, that's fine. I could call this stream a little early anyways. You could do that. All right, so Gabe says, okay, when you get it, uh, when you get a chance, or when you get to it, can I get Cam Davis, Hosler, Nakajima build? Okay. So he wants Davis, which obviously I love. Bo Hosler, which I rewatched my video from last week just to find like the people who, um, who, who participated in the chat, because that's how I, I, you know, I'll just, try to fast forward and find everyone um, who participated in the chat to add them to the giveaway. And I, I got, uh, when I skipped ahead, I got to the Bohazer part where I'm like, I could just never play Bohazer. He ends up being the optimal lineup, which it's again, you can't, you, you can't make, uh, I don't want to say declaratives, but you can't, you can't completely cut people out of your player pool because then you're going to miss out during the time that they're, you know, they, they do well. Okay, Nakajima. Oh, I thought I just saw him. There he is. Okay. So we're building lamps for uh, Gabe right now. And he wanted to anchor around Cam Davis, Bo Hosler, and Kita Nakajima. So here we go. We have Ricky Fowler, Cam Davis, Bo Hosler, Taylor, Moore, Nick Taylor, and then Kita Nakajima. That's not terrible. That's a 10-9-8-7-7-6. A very clean looking 10-9-8-7-7-6, might I add. And golfers that I don't mind. I'm a huge fan. I mean, I think this is a good tournament for Cam Davis to excel in. So we'll put uh, Gabe's lineups right there. So Kita will always be the low one. So I'll just take out Nick Taylor. And since Gabe's not here to tell me otherwise, I get to make the rules. So that's just how it goes. Ricky Fowler, Cam Davis, Bo Hazard, Tom Hoagie, Akshay Batia, and Nakajima. That's a fun lineup to say. Batia Nakajima. I like this one too. This is, an this is another good one. Has a lot of like birdies and bunches. Hoagie is one of those streak golfers where he gets hot. He gets those birdie streaks. Same same applies with uh, Batia. Hazer, I'll always kind of call him like a... Um, I don't think he's a birdie in bunches type of guy. I think he's more like a grinded out golfer. So I think he's that type that when the when the score is closer to par, he's a better golfer for those those tournaments. But I, I like this this lineup. Okay. Uh, I unfortunately have to kick out Batia. Shot says I faded Cam and Hauser last week. Oh, he has good tournament history. I did not fade Cam. I did have a lot of Cam. Rose, what's going on? Um, but yeah, I faded Hosler. I, I don't even, you know, when I saw that he was a part of the optimal lineup, I didn't really care if <laughs> I'm being honest, like, oh, shoot, I missed it, you know, big whoop. Um, I'm cool, like, personally, I think he's one of those golfers that if I roster and he misses the cut, which obviously you can't do this week, but if he were to miss the cut rostering him, I get so mad at myself for that, 
more so than I get mad at myself for not playing him. And that's, you know, like, obviously I'm not $25,000 richer, you know, because I'm sure if I would have played him in the $5, or oh, I shouldn't say I'm sure, but if I had played him in the $5, that means I was that much closer to hitting the optimal lineup and that much closer to winning a GPP, but I didn't because I don't care for Hostler. <laughs> Uh, this lineup is interesting. There's no 10k golfer in it, which makes it more well-rounded, and it's actually pretty decent. Cam Davis, Keegan Bradley, Eric Cole, Ohaz or Sam Ryder, and Kita Nakajima. Really like Sam Ryder this week. Uh, I shouldn't say I really like him, but at his price tag, 7,000 flat, that helps build a lot of lineups. And he's, he's a skilled golfer, so I have no issues. We will kick out Sam Ryder, despite me saying that, because he is the low price guy, and it just makes lineup building easier when you kick out the low guy uh, and bring in some someone else. Rose, if you would like me to build two to four golfers, leave them in the chat. Uh, I did go over marquee tee times earlier. I did go over anchor buckets. If you want to rewind, check that out first before selecting your two golfers. You're more than welcome to. I'll probably still be on for another 40 minutes. Um, otherwise, if you know two golfers you want me to build lineups for, and I certainly can. But we've got uh, these lineups from Gabe, and then uh, Josh Maz would like some lineups, and then Shot Like Harden. Which Shot says, my dad and brother, poker players, love bad beat stories. Oh, yep. <laughs> Told them about my Rainmaker's mishap. Yeah, no, no. It still haunts me still haunts me i am very frustrated i even played okay so i i bought i bought the showdown pack last week i got nothing but crap cards N not even one good player i think the best player i had like going into friday's round was trevor were below literally that was he was doing the best i had a jimmy walker card in there um robert streb was in there oh i did have kevin tway and you want to know what I did with Kevin Tway? He was three under before play suspended or something like that. He was like the, um, uh, what's it called? Oh, the offer price on him was $8. I'm like, yeah, I'm selling that right now. So that was my one victory with the showdown slate uh, for Rainmakers last week was to get rid of Tway for eight bucks. <laughs> I didn't, well, it was $8 that I, I sold him for, but, you know, DraftKings takes 10%, so I only got, like, seven twenty from it, but you were never going to get Tway more expensive than that, so I, I felt like I won uh, in that particular moment, but I tried buying some cards for, like, $3 to try to make out a, a Sunday lineup, and I was winning money for a little bit of time, but it was such a crap lineup, again, headed by Trevor Werbelow. Who couldn't have disappointed me more he played with Lexi Thompson and he looked good so I was like man I really hope this is a breakout tournament for him no nah, he sucked I probably could have sold him for six dollars or something like that when he was at eight under I think after two days or something like that but yeah didn't so it is what it is Rose says, my first time seeing David Thompson last tournament. I'm not betting on him for a while. Davis Thompson, I'm guessing. And picked my lineup. Normally do single entry. Okay, no worries, man. Uh, I, But I could give you some ideas, you know, or maybe not. I know how superstition works, so uh, I don't have to. JK, nice seeing you, man. Haven't seen you in a while. How, are you, how have you been? All right. The lineup on the screen, uh, screen. Cam Davis, Seth Agala, two 9Ks, Hosler, Shank, two 8Ks, Justin, Suh, and the 6K golfer. That's not terrible. Kind of would rather have a, a, a 10K golfer in there, but hey. I don't mind seeing these, these uh, anti-10K lineups. Uh, we're going to kick out Justin, Suh. Uh, shot. What did your dad and brother say about that? 
This lineup, there we go. I like seeing this. Xander Shoffley at 11-1, Cam Davis at 95, Bohazer 85, Hoagie at 78, Nakajima at 68, and then Ben Taylor at 63. And just a reminder to everyone and to the person I'm building lineups for, this is for Gabe Brown. So we'll build a few more lineups and then we're gonna move on from these. We're gonna kick out Ben Taylor from this one. Uh, JK says golf season is almost over north in Philly. That's about it. I'm gonna try to get out a couple more times before it's a wrap. Yeah, it's northern Minnesota here. And I think tomorrow might be the warmest day for the next seven days. And it's gonna be 57 degrees. I think that's tomorrow. Could have been today. I might have my days mixed up. So yeah, golf season is I haven't golfed in three weeks. I was uh I was on a trip in Norway and London for two weeks. Didn't golf there. I, I mean, I went out and hit golf balls just to make sure I still had it, but now it's been a week since I've done that. So gotta get myself out there eventually. But I hear you, man. I think, I mean, you've got to still have some time left unless you just are one of those that are anti 40 degree days, you know, going out and playing golf in 40, 40 degree uh, weather. I don't mind. Got to gotta keep playing all the way until you can, uh, until you can't. This lineup, Xander, Cam Davis, Bo Hauser. I didn't even know Taylor Montgomery was in the line, in the, in the field at $7,100, no cut event. I, this is the one time I'll play Taylor Montgomery. I got no issues playing Taylor Montgomery here. KH Lee and Nakajima. Sure. We'll do that one. Cam Davis showing up a ton, by the way. I, I don't hate it. Don't hate it. Although, if I'm building lineups for myself, I'm keeping him capped. Like right now, 21% is the most that I would... I might move that up to 32. Like... This is all driven by formulas, the, the max exposures. However, my, as Chad Eckert would say, beer gut brain wants me to put Cam Davis at like 33% exposure. And that's all that I'd really want to play him at is 33%. I wouldn't want to go too far over that. And I guess we're, we are locking him in for Gabe. So that's why. <clears throat> Josh says it's cold here in Buffalo. I mean, I, yeah. By the Great Lakes, I know it. I lived uh, in Superior, Wisconsin for a little while. My aunt lives in Duluth. They get the lake effect there. It can get real cold real fast. And obviously Buffalo, we all hear, we all see the stories of the, of the uh, Buffalo Stadium, you know, just being trounced with snow. Yeah, we, we've all seen it. <laughs> Shot goes, they were sick for you, but smirked a little. Yeah, I know. It's always, always funny when, uh, when it happens to someone else, but not to yourself. Yeah, I don't mind playing cold or playing in the elements, lol, but just checking this out, really waiting for the next full season. Yeah, I know, man. I hear you. This line up here is uh, Xander, Cam Davis. We already talked about this one. Let's kick out KH Lee and get to the next one. Davis, Thigalo, Hauser, Shank, Griffin, Nakajima. I don't mind. So I don't mind this lineup outside of Nakajima. Like, I'd like to see if this lineup gets built again because these five golfers are pretty solid. Like, if you take out Xander, you take out Colin Morikawa, Sungjae, and Ricky, these five golfers together would be a perfect alternate event. Like, lineup to put together. You wouldn't be able to in an alternate event because... Obviously, we're a little top heavy here, but these five golfers are pretty good for a field like this. I like that a lot, but I'm not going to do this one. Don't really care for it. 
I don't know if I should kick out Ben Griffin. I think I'm gonna kick out Sahithagala. There's there's been a lot of Sahithagala lineups being shown. I just want to see something different. Rose says it's cold here in Florida. Yeah, what's cold? 65, 70 degrees. That's cold for you, Rose. Uh, this lineup, Fowler, Davis, Hosler, Moore, Michael Kim. Kita Nakajima. Don't really care for that one. Uh, if if Michael Kim was in a lineup, I mean, he is the second lowest price guy. I was going to say, I, I, I'm only playing Michael Kim if he's the lowest price guy or he's the second lowest price guy. But I would want my 6k golfer to be a little bit better than Kita Nakajima if I'm playing Michael Kim. By the way, Michael Kim for the longest time was a 6k golfer, right? I think you could use this type of logic when building lineups. So he's a 6k golfer. He's all he's he's always been a 6k golfer. You want to know who's used to be in the 7k range quite a bit? Mackenzie Hughes. So I think if you went like 7k if you think of Mackenzie Hughes as a 7K golfer, like if I if if this was Mackenzie Hughes instead of Nak, uh, Kita Nakajima, I don't mind that. I don't mind you know this lineup, but I don't like it with Kita there. That's kind of my whole my whole thought process there. So I'm gonna kick out Michael Kim. <laughs> Jk, that that was kind of my. My, th my thought too is like, yeah, Northern Minnesota, come here. Come come check out Northern Minnesota for a winter and tell me, let me know what cold is. 60 is winter here in Texas. That is a perfect, that is like a warm spring day. Uh, I wouldn't say it's a perfect summer day in Minnesota. Perfect summer, summer day in Minnesota, 70 degrees. 70, it doesn't really matter how windy it is because it doesn't get super windy, but 70 degrees. Is a perfect summer day. Fowler, Cam Davis, Hauser, Shank, Taylor Montgomery. Did we, didn't we just do this one? Oh, that was with Xander. Xander, Hauser, M Montgomery, KH Lee. So I don't think we have KH Lee in this one, right? No. Yeah, I like this one. I like this one a lot. This is basically uh, subbing out Xander, or uh, Ricky, I should say, from, or no, it was Xander. So this one is very similar. The one that I just saved was Ricky Fowler, Cam Davis, Bohazer, Adam Shank, Taylor Moore. The one above it was Xander, Cameron Davis, Bohazer, Taylor, uh, I'm sorry, Taylor Montgomery, not Taylor Moore, Taylor Montgomery in each of those. But basically, we replace Z uh, Xander with Ricky, and what that allows us to do is go from KH Lee up to Adam Shank. Same lineup, just making those two substitutions, and I would much rather take the latter than the former. One more lineup for Gabe, and then we're going to move on. This one, I think I need to click out of... Well, Taylor Montgomery, of course. $7,100. Okay. Summer here is 110 and 100% humidity. Yuck. Gross. No, thank you. How do you, what do you do in the summer shot? I'm just wondering, uh, us northerners, we always think about that when we think about summer. Like, we'll hear stories of people in Missouri or Alabama or whatever with their hot days. It's like, how? How do you, what do you do? You just sit inside the whole time? Do you do anything outside when it's that warm? And that humid. Imagine you go outside and you just suffocate like instantly. Like you just, it just feels like you can't breathe air. Like you're just swallowing water. <laughs> Cam Davis, Adam Scott, Hauser, Shank, Hoagie. That's a good lineup. That's a good one to end on. And of course that was anchored by Kita Nakajima. Okay, so I think that's nine lineups for Gabe and nine lineups. Oh, that's eight lineups for Gabe. Nine lineups. Oh, man, I forgot who we did lineups for in the beginning. Uh, eight game. Eight game. So let's move on to the next one. And I believe we have Josh. Josh, are you still in the chat, by the way? I haven't really seen you... Uh, 
chatting it up with us. Doesn't you don't have to, but I just haven't seen you there, so I'm not sure if you uh, if you're here or not. You can uh, help direct me on some of the guys that I'm gonna kick out. So Bradley and Davis, it's a pretty good pretty good combo. Charlie Harn says, I'm used to it. Doesn't really bother me. I get it. Like, the cold doesn't... I, you get used to the cold real fast. It doesn't bother me either. Like the Norwegians say, there's not bad weather. There's just dressing poorly for the weather you're in. But, you know, I don't know how crazy they are. Uh, All right. Davis, King and Bradley. Let's see the first couple lineups. You got me locked in on monthly now too. Monthly what? Oh, Monty Montgomery. I, th I thought you said monthly. Davis Bradley Cole. Do you want me to lock in Monty? Is that what you mean by that? I I, I can go ahead and lock him in. I am on mute. I blew my nose. Put myself on mute. You guys are just watching me talk. Oh, I didn't even see Charlie Carnicles. You're muted. <laughs> I can't even blame you because you, you already did. All right. So let me recap what I said because I think I remember it. That last lineup that I built uh, had Sam Ryder in it. So... Sam Ryder I kicked out if you want me to change that I certainly can um because I think Keith Mitchell would have been the only other person that I would want to kick out of there but since Sam Ryder was the low price guy <laughs> man nobody understands the words come out of your mouth Okay. You do like Ryder? Okay, would you want me to kick out uh, Keith Mitchell then? Because he was the other low low price guy from that.
JK, are you not playing DFS this year? Like, are you done with the fall season? Just don't want to? Because you could win big this year. You could still win big. They're still giving away 25000 for the drive of the green. Kick, <laughs> kick Mitchell. Saw him in Rochester. Okay. You got it. Yeah, he, he just seems like a crab ass all the time. All the time. Like when he was, when he was walking, he had that big visor on. And I swear, like when he was walking this way, he'd like kind of like look and just like look down. Like he would just like look at the corner of his eye. Just didn't want to talk to anyone. Didn't want to say, because there's some people are like, yo, Keith, what's up, man? Like, hope, hope you, you kick ass or hope you, you do really well this week or whatever. And he just like would look in the corner of his eye and then just keep walking. He didn't say shit. Sorry, he didn't say anything. Uh, this lineup's good. Davis, Bradley, Hosler, JJ Spawn, Taylor Moore, and then Taylor Montgomery. I don't mind that lineup at all. Another good anti-10K lineup. Uh, wants to kick out Montgomery, but because we have him locked in, we're going to kick out Taylor Moore. If you want that different, if you want one of these guys to be kicked out, let me know, and I can certainly do that. No time for the peasants. <laughs> I feel like I do better in the... Yeah. I, I mean, like... I do think more people are putting their money into football. That's just a given. I think also people's researching. Like, if you think about just yourself, like how much time could you actually put into researching any of the fantasy sports you're playing? You know, a lot of people do fantasy football along with DFS fantasy football. Um, with their betting and stuff like that. It's a lot of work to go into those things. Most people aren't going to do that same level of strategy or effort in golf so that's why i also do think it's easier in the fall too ham davis keegan bradley eric cole aaron rye taylor montgomery brennan i think this is my favorite lineup so far that's being built especially of the anti 10k lineups uh we'll kick out brandon woo 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 you know it. Rose said, this is my first half a year DFS golf. I picked a couple guys in my lineup that won tournaments. Rose, I think I remember you coming into the stream and saying you were relatively new at that time. So how are you liking golf? If that's true. How are you liking golf so far? Shot says, I played every sport, but PGA is my favorite and the funnest, especially when you go to the tournament. Yeah, I agree. I agree with that. Uh, I do. I dabble with football, but I just the, the only thing I like about football, like the one thing I like fo about football more so than I think any of the other sports is stacking. Like it makes sense to stack. Obviously, if you got a receiver that's doing really well. His quarterback is probably doing really well also. So putting lineups together that way and then trying to think of game stacks or creating narratives to build your lineups around, that is all fun. But it's not fun when you when you don't. <laughs> I mean, to me, it's like, cool. I was right with four or five people in my lineup. However, because there are nine uh, players in my lineup, the other three, four, five, you know, players didn't do good enough to even get me like min cash. Like I had like four, I had four of the top scoring people in my NFL lineup and the other five just tanked. You won nothing, nothing. Uh, JK goes, I, I was picking winners almost every week. Wish I had trusted my strategy with outrights. Hey man, be lucky you can you can actually uh, bet outright. Can't do it here in Minnesota unless I try to do the VPN route. I do, I'm just different. I give it all my attention every... I do, you know it. Yeah. 
hooked. Yeah, football is one of those, and it just, yeah. Six golfers, very easy. Like, you have to think, who are you going to play in the 10k range, if any? And if you choose to do the anti 10k route, then it's like, do you do two, two nines, two eights? Do you do one nine, three eights? How much money do you leave on the table? It becomes fun when you build lineups that way. And it's like one list of people you're looking at, whereas like football is like quarterback, running back, receiver, tight end. And so you're just looking at the, you know, whatever. Golf is just like one long list. It's like who, which six golfers are gonna win me the most money? Our first Sungjae lineup of the entire night. Sungjae, Davis, Bradley, Taylor, Montgomery, and Harry Hall. I don't mind that. Uh, I'm building lineups for Josh Maz, and I'll probably do two more. We'll probably save two more, and then we'll move on to Shalik -like Hardens, and then Rose is on deck after that, I believe. We'll go from there. Davis, Bradley, Cole, Rye, Lee Hodges, Taylor Montgomery. I don't really care for Lee Hodges. You know, prior to his win, he's just one of those guys that... I don't know. He reminds me of like Matthew Neesmith. You like that last lineup that I that I was just talking about? Where I'm just like, I don't care for it. <laughs> Davis, Bradley, Cole, JJ Spawn, Kurt Kitayama. See, now this is a lineup I'll go to because Kurt Kitayama has talent. I He's won a tournament. I know Lee Hodges has won a tournament, but uh, I would trust Kurt Kitayama to win more tournaments than I would Lee Hodges. And this, this lineup here, I like a lot. As always, Josh, as always, you are welcome. All right, one more saved one, I think. This one we're going to kick out. The guy I just talked about, Kurt Kitayama. That's cool, Rose. Very cool. This is actually, I, I like this one because it, it brings in Mac Hughes, who I was just talking about not too long ago. We have Davis, Bradley, Cole, Hosler, Montgomery, Mac Hughes. It's a pretty good anti 10K lineup. Um, not that I'm like all pro, like for the anti 10K, but that one's, that was a good one. Yeah, that's eight lineups. Cool. Alrighty then, let's go to uh, Shalik Harden, who wants Sungjae and Song. Seems like you're trying to do a folklore lineup here. This guy right here, Young Han Song. Tell me where, where did you hear about this guy? Why do you want to play him? Gotta know. Rose, I, 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 I would agree with you in the in the thought that you need to spend more time thinking about the right combination of golfers to put together. Um, and of course, we're all different. I, I, I wouldn't disagree with you, uh, but I'm one of those that likes to play over a hundred lineups, a uh, hundred unique lineups. Because I also know that chasing perfection is difficult to do when it's just one lineup that you're building. So I would much rather play as many as I can to try to hit at one time to win all of the monies. Which I was able to do uh, during the Byron Nelson, I believe. The one that Jason Day won. We won the uh, quarter arcade there and won 500 bucks or whatever it was. All of the monies. Low stakes player. All right, so the first lineup for you shot is Xander, Sungjae, Bo Hosler, Nick Taylor, Cage Lee, and Song. Who would you like kicked out of here? <laughs> I heard he's had a couple second, play, uh, second place, or second place, he's had a couple second places somewhere in Japan. Yeah. That's all it takes, huh? You're so easy, so easy.
No, I agree. Kit Haws are out of there. I actually wouldn't mind Hosler here if we're not pairing him up with KH Lee. And I, I just, I, I don't want that. Xander, Sungjae, Aaron Rye, Nick Taylor, Sam Ryder, and Song. So I think the only issue I have with this lineup is I don't like Nick Taylor and Aaron Rye together for whatever reason. It, it just doesn't feel right. Like it's got to be one or the other. Who would you like kicked out of this lineup? I'm also not saving this one. I'm gonna look for other lineups that maybe we, or other combinations people mentioned. Oh, shot! I didn't even see your, you had mentioned that it was a hard time explaining shot, uh, rainmakers to your, your uh, dad and brother. Can you win the optimizer without having any cash left over? Rose, I also didn't see that before either. Um, can you win? Oh, are you saying can you hit the, optim the optimal lineup, I'm guessing, without having cash left over? Yes, you can. It, I mean, the optimal lineup has left zero dollars on the table before. Multiple times. Not just once, not just twice, but multiple times. JK Lawrence, yeah, I don't mind being cold or playing in the elements, but just checking this out. Okay, I already read that one. Okay, I think I'm caught up. Uh, or I shouldn't say caught up, but the ones that I missed. I don't think there's anyone else in the queue. So, uh, oh, wait, 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 wait. Rose, Rose is in the queue. Okay. Diala, Minwoo Lee, Yuki, and Amori and Cam Davis. So those five golfers and just see what maybe the last one comes into. Yep. Boots Taylor. Xander, Sungjae, Cole, Ryder. Ne okay, this is a lineup I can get behind. I like this one. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of Neesmith, but I don't mind playing one of them. Xander, Sungjae, Eric Cole, Sam Ryder, Kevin Yu. I like that lineup a lot, too. I'm ahead of you, Shot. I'm ahead of you. I kicked Nee Smith without you, uh, you, you telling me. I already knew. I already knew. Uh, I think I'm going to kick Kevin Yu, but we can bring him back if you don't want him to be kicked out. Hey, by the way, everyone, I got accepted uh, to the YouTube partner program. I don't know if you guys can see the little dollar bill sign that's underneath. That was not there before. So uh, I think somewhere in the future, I'll take. Um, what's it called? I'll take advantage of that. Like, I'll add little membership things and stuff like, well, I don't think I can do memberships. I think I can only offer, like, the super chats and the super stickers and stuff like that. So, I mean, that was pretty cool. I got, I just got an email from YouTube out of nowhere saying, hey, you've qualified for the, the partner program. Do you want, uh, do you want to apply? And then I did and I got accepted. So that's pretty cool. Xander, Sungjae, Aaron Rye, Hoagie, K.H. Lee, and Song. You know, I don't, I don't mind that one. I like, I mean, to Charlotte Carden's uh, expression, I do like Hoagie. 
I'm having a hard time. Like, I don't think Rai is also a, a birdies and bunches type of guy. I could be wrong. Like, I don't know exactly. Uh, let me double check. I just want to see what his, like, scoring average is through the DraftKings app. So I just don't think he's he's like a high birdie golfer. I could be wrong. Could be wrong. Okay. So 66 I see is a low. Oh, I only see four events. Okay. DraftKings, very cool. <laughs> Shriners 28. Okay, so you is 12 under. Uh, for the Shriners. That was good for 28th. 17 under at the BMW PGA Championship. Those are all DP World Tours. He did okay, never mind. I I guess I I'm I'm wrong. 22 birdies at that BMW, 22 birdies at the Shriners. No Eagles, though. Uh did score a lot of points at the BMW PGA Championship. No eagles there though, so I don't know how. It's probably just placement points. Ten birdies at the Irish Open. Yeah, that doesn't help me. Let me see if I can pull up something else. I'm I'm just really curious if my feelings about Aaron Rye are unfounded, or uh, not my findings, but my if if I said findings, if I said feelings, that's what I meant. Okay, Mr. Rye, man, I can't. So two weeks ago, I had a lot of headway on my database, and I'm really close to finishing it. Aaron Rye, so this is what I have in, okay, you can't really see that. That's too, too painstakingly far away. Okay. Of DK top tens, he has finished twice out of how many events? 29. So two events out of 29. Uh, looks like the Canadian Open was one. Didn't know which one to select. Canadian Open, which would have been a birdie fest, right? That was a 67, 69, 69, 67. Okay, not, not super low, but pretty good. And then what was the other one? The Houston Open, which was, uh, it wasn't a low scoring. Like, that's a tough golf course. So that makes sense. What I had said, he's closer to like a better grind it out par golfer. But he did have a 64 in there, which would have been really good. I think that's a par 70 golf course, by the way. Yeah, I, the more I look at this, the more I'm convinced what I was originally feeling is. Is correct. Cut maker, I think that's fine, but yeah, I'm not, I'm not convinced. I don't want to play Aaron Rye. That's all raw data, by the way. So I'm not trying to persuade you one way or the other. Rye cost me hit the Canadian. Nope. All the Rye lineups passed me up. Oh, well, so you're feeling the other way, the opposite. So here's something that I've 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 found interesting looking through show, uh, showdown lineups. So when I missed out on that 10k, um, I was really excited about the the lineups that I had because and and let me know if you guys notice the same thing. I notice usually your top guys always have at well your top guys have four rounds in the 60s place like fifth place to 15th place have three rounds in the 60s so there's always one round that's going to be bad so if you're looking at like a saturday sunday showdown i would much look i would much rather look to see how many rounds of in the 60s someone has and if there's like if he already had his round in the 70 and you're anticipating he's going to have a good performance that's where i would be like okay that's what i want to play so here for instance First place and second place, all in the 60s. 
You also had Victor Hovland, who shot in the 60s, who's in the optimal lineup. You also had uh, Hayden Buckley, who shot in the 60s. I guess there's one there. Okay, all of these did as well. But like for me, when I when I when I see this, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, you know, 70, 70, 70, 70. You kind of see how like there's always three rounds in the 60s, and this is all on the top of the leaderboard. So if you're already like in the beginning of the week predicting like say Wyndham Clark finishing inside the top 10 well Wyndham Clark had one round in the you know 71 so the next three rounds are almost to me like free rolls like if you were to think of it that way it's like okay he had his one round in the 70s I still think he has the chance to finish inside the top 10 that means he's got to be he's got to be good the next three rounds um, but that's normally what I see every single week. Uh, your fifth play or like, you know, your top four, top five golfers in, um, in a tournament will always have near four rounds in the sixties nearly. So I just highlighted the seventies here in the top five Four golfers were all in the sixties. And if you can guess those guys, right. The entire time, then that's awesome. But also, if you do have a guy that, that shoots 70, 70 something, but you still think he is, you know, a lock to finish inside the top 10, or you thought that before entering um, the week, then it's a perfect, perfect reason to play them and continuously play them in the, you know, the upcoming showdown slates. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. I kind of sidetracked. So we are on Shalik Harden's lineups where you want Song and Sung J. We already saved this one, I believe. We kick KH Lee out, right? Yeah, KH Lee, or actually you tell me, because I, I, I went on this Aaron Rye kind of spout. If you wanted KH Lee to stay in, the Korean cowboy, as you like to call him, let me know. Xander, Sungjae, Justin Sa, Tom Hoagie, Brandon Wu. I like this lineup. So this is the lineup that I, I could get behind. Like Brandon Wu is just enough of a wild card that I wouldn't really necessarily trust, but I like that for GPPs. Ooh, boot Xander. Do you want me to keep KH Lee then? Because I had booted KH Lee. Let me just bring them back in case uh, you can let me know one way or the other and I might do it afterwards, but build a Xanderless lineups. Sungjae, Ricky Fowler, Eric Cole, Taylor Moore, KH Lee, uh, Young Han Song. Uh, yeah, I don't care for KH Lee, really. I'm going to kick him out. So we just quite, we just answered our question. Bring them back. We did, and I'm I'm picking them back out. Obviously, these are your lineups. So you tell me if you want him back, and maybe kick Taylor Moore out, because that would be the uh, the alternative. Uh, this one's a good one. Sungjae, Ricky, Eric Cole, Moore, Batia. That's a really solid lineup. Kick more. Okay, so I'll bring back the Korean Cowboy. Once again, bringing him back from the grave. Resurrecting him. Ooh. Sungjae, Fowler, Cole, JJ Spawn, Hayden Buckley. I like that lineup a lot. You know what contest I wish they would t they'd bring back? The penny. The penny ones. You know, 20 max, 1 cent. Why not? Even if, like, give me 100. You know, or 150 max. That way I can just try out lineups. That'd be awesome. 
Well, which one would you like kicked out, by the way? Buckley, Spawn, Cole? Probably Buckley, I'm guessing. I'll kick him out. I'll preemptively kick him out. You let me know if you want him back in. And whoever else you want kicked out. Sung JM, Keegan Bradley, Eric Cole, Aaron Rye, Sam Ryder. That's a... That's a lineup. I think I would much rather this lineup be at Tory Pines than I would here, but hey, I don't mind this. I don't even know if Tory Pines, if Tory Pines was like a comp for this golf course, then um, this one's perfect. That is seven. I will build you up to two more lineups. We'll see how good these ones will be. Which one do you want kicked out of here? Ryder, Rye, or Cole? If I was, if, if it was me, I'd kick out Rye. I don't really care for Aaron Rye. Interesting. Sungjae, Keegan, Cole, Mitchell, Batia, Song. Actually, that is a very volatile lineup. I think it has very good uh, potential. Is there a golfer you'd want me to kick out of that one? It's like, if I'll build one more, just out of curiosity. But which one would you want kicked out? Bradley, Cole, Mitchell, Batia? Which one? <laughs> All right, last one. It's a pretty good sub. We just basically sub out uh, Kashmir Keith for Adam Shank, which I don't know. They're interchangeable for me. I'm neither more excited or less excited about this lineup. Pretty much the same. Just out of curiosity, I'm going to kick out uh, Eric Cole. And instantly fall in love with it. M. Scott Bradley Hoagie Batia Song. Yeah, I, I like that one. Okay. The next one is Rosé, and you posted two kind of combos. I think they're the same. They're not the same. Uh, Rosé, I can do this one if you want me to. Josh, I didn't see that you said Mitchell's the shooter McGavin of the tour. I like that. That's pretty fun. That's pretty funny. I know. Shot. Best one was at the end. Uh, okay, so we're down to Rosés. Um, we got... You know what? I'll, I'll do them both for you. If I get new viewers that come here towards the end and want lineups build, I, I will build them for them. However, uh, I think these might be the last two lineups that I'll build. So you want Sahith? Minwoo Lee, which hey, I like that. Minwoo. Cam Davis. No, 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 no. Yeah, Cam Davis. So three nine Ks. Wow. Um. Okay. Hold on. Time up.
I don't know if we can build a lineup with these guys. I think that's too expensive. Right? It's gotta be. Yeah. Too expensive. I don't know if this was just a player pool. Was that just a, a, a player pool, Rosé? Joey Deaton, what's going on, man? Haven't, uh, haven't seen you in a while. Rosé, um, so f it's pretty difficult to get four 9k golfers in one lineup. I don't know if what you meant to say is... Oh, did I... Hold on. Did I see that wrong? Oh, I'm, I'm mixing the two. I'm mixing the two. My apologies. You didn't put Nicardi in that one. It was uh, Yuki Inamori. There he is. Found him. My bad. That one doesn't work out either. What is that? Why is that? So Sahith the Gala, Minwuli. There's no Keegan Bradley in this one. I'm so stupid. Sahith. Minwoo, Yuki, and... Okay, 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 okay. My bad. My bad. My bad. I mistake. I mistook this one. But it doesn't work out either way. Uh, PM, PM, PM. Four PMs. Is this a PM as well? AM. Uh, what would cause this not to work? Is Minwoo just not... Is he not going to get any love, I wonder? Let me kick out Thigala and just see if it'll run. Okay. It will build a lineup. So, here's the thing with the bucket system. I have all these minimums in here. And the minimums mean we have to play at least one golfer from these buckets. And what's most likely happening is the golfers you selected might be very unique where because we're locking in four, it doesn't give the bucket system the ability to find the minimums for all these other buckets. And I'm not going to lie, trying to like diagnose or, or uh, uh, investigate which bucket is not pulling, it becomes time intensive. So I don't really want to um, try to investigate. So I would say this. I imagine you like Yuki Inamori. I can keep him in. The only issue is when you start out Cam Davis, Minwoo Lee, and Keegan Bradley, I think what we need to do is figure out which person out of those three you'd want kicked out, and then we can build lineups. Um moving forward from there that second lineup is just to put in in the multiple lineups that i create okay is that your solo lineup like is that the one that you're just going with <clears throat> joey says yeah college started back up and i got a job at a local golf course that's life awesome dude i hope it's in warm weather i imagine it has to be right Do it my way. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm going to kick out KH Lee. I don't mind this one. I don't care for KH Lee.
Xander, Cam Davis, Minwoo Lee, Sam Ryder, Brandon Wu, Yuki Inamori. I like that one. I like that one a lot. I don't know what happened to Brandon Wu over the year, but you know, he he was in the last year one bucket for the Mexico Championship and it was like him and John Rahm and a few other, I think maybe Emiliano Grillo. Like there were good names in there and it just felt right to have Brandon Wu in those lineups. From that moment forward, I don't think he's he had a top 10 finish after that. And I don't know what happened, but it seemed like he was trending upwards. Like it was good. Uh, I'm going to kick Brandon Wu out despite saying all that because you don't want to play too much Brandon Wu. Rose says that's the one with no cash left over. Okay. Uh, take out Bradley. Okay. So, yeah, the weather is starting to cool down, though. I'm from North Carolina. I go to UNC. Sweet. I do love Carolina weather. Ah, but hey, sounds good. I had a teaching pro that I worked with from North Carolina, but we were working in Palm Springs. So, and he was talking about how great North Carolina is. Um, I got to check it out sometime. Sung J, Cam Davis, Minwoo Lee, Taylor Moore, Nick Taylor, Yuki. I don't I don't care for these two golfers together. I really don't. Uh I, I'm not a huge fan of Taylor Moore. Those those guys are interchangeable. I'd rather just not play one of them. I don't know which one I don't want to play. Shot says also with Song, his odds are up to around 6,700 golfer range. So I think he's underpriced on DK. Hey, that's a that's a great point. I mean, you definitely should consider that when evaluating your golfers. Um, Joey, Joey asks, do you ever go to any tournaments like PGA Tour events to go watch? I did. I did at the 3M Open because I I live in Minnesota, so I went to that one. That was pretty fun. I love this lineup, by the way. Xander, Cam Davis, Minwoo Lee, Sam Ryder, Hayden Buckley. Man, Hayden Buckley was also one of those golfers last year that started out really strong and then just faded. Looked like he, like Sky was the limit for him as well. Fowler, Davis, Minwoo, Taylor Moore. There we go. We, we kicked out um, Nick Taylor and some of this changed. I think Xander was here instead of Ricky. But now we get to add. Yeah, I like that lineup. Anything that can have Cam Davis in it, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of for. So. All right. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to kick Taylor Moore out. I'll build a couple more. I kind of want to see what that lineup looks like that you, you gave me, Rose, that had all six golfers. Just see how it sets up. I'm for this lineup right here. Like, Zach Blair's in my dummy lineup. And just to prove it to you, show it to you. Right here, Zach Blair. I'm for it. All for it. Dummy lineup doesn't really mean anything to me, by the way. Like, it's just, that's my first gut, like, Putting together a lineup just makes sense to me. Okay, so Rosé, those are the lineups I built for you. I want to see what the other one you provided. I think it was six golfers already together. I just want to see if they follow the bucket system. And if they do, out of, out of sheer chance, I will save that and play it.
I do like Matt Wallace though. That's a uh, that's a sneaky play too. Sometimes I call Cameron Champ in my head, Cameron Camp. Don't know why. Just just works out that way. Okay, so I already see one discrepancy. Nick Hardy is in Group Seven. So too is Cameron Davis. Now I'm not saying that that that's impossible and it can't happen. Just throwing that out there. It doesn't follow the sweet spot process completely, and that's fine. So Davis, Bradley, Thigala, Wallace, ha uh, Hardy, and Cameron Camp. Like I said, I call them that sometimes. So we look at all the anchor buckets. This one fits perfect. This one fits perfect. So does this one. So we're we're already good. There we go. Lovely. The the course is three buckets we've got. It's be, you know, it's picking three, picking two, and we need one each. This doesn't go over any of the limits. We're looking good so far. Uh we have the one recent form six that we want. Beautiful. Got that. Ooh, I think we got it. The only one that doesn't work out are the Group seven. You know what, Rose? I'm going to save this lineup and I'm going to use it. Uh, a no cut event with a limited field, having golfers in the same group. I mean, we've already proven it when we went through the marquee tee times. It happens. Uh, I don't remember which year it was. Was it last year? I mean, Putnam and Grillo down here. Group 10. Very close down here, but no. I mean, we have a, a GPP winning lineup that had two guys playing together, so it can be done there. That's okay. I mean, I we saw it last week. We saw it a couple years here at the Zozo. I've got no issue with doing that, so I'm all for it. I'm cool with it. It's a good lineup, Rosé. Shot says my first gut lineup normally does well. Last week I didn't uh, save my... I, I built too many lineups, or uh, I shouldn't say... Yeah, I built too many lineups for the uh, contest that I reserved. And because no one's really playing DFS Golf, DraftKings, they're not creating more contests for you to put lineups in. So... Uh, usually the one lineup that always gets kicked out is the, the, um, the dummy lineup. So, all right. Uh, anyone else with lineups they'd like me to build? Otherwise, I think we'll just call it a night. I think building lineups, uh, my favorite combos were like putting Xander and Cam Davis together, but I, I wanted to see more Adam Scott lineups. It's my best Adam Scott lineup. Fowler, Scott, Thigala, Batia, Nick Taylor, Brandon Wu. I, I don't mind that. I don't want Nick Taylor, but that's not terrible. I'm just going to build a couple lineups here. Uh, in the meantime, if anyone wants to see another combo built, I certainly can do that. But if I don't see anything by the time I'm done building, we'll call it a night. I'm not a huge fan of putting two $6,900 golfers together, but I do like Buckley. I like Buckley more than I like Wu. Don't really care for that one. <laughs> check, 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 and check. It's a decent anti 10k lineup. I'll probably save that one. Good. Um, I don't want to see an anti 10k lineup. I like Batia. 
I like Buckley. So let's see, let's bring him back. And I want at least one 10K golfer. Fowler, Scott, Thigala. And I see, I don't care for Aaron Rye. I don't care for Robbie Shell. Fowler, Scott, Thigala, Batia, Ryder, Buckley. Okay, so that's that's a lineup I like. I like that lineup a lot. That's a good one. Let's see here. Yeah, I'll probably kick out Buckley. Although I do like Ryder. Uh, I, I think kicking him out is just fine. So because I'm playing Scott, uh, the optimizer will not pick Colin Morikawa no matter what. This lineup is fine. I think I want to see things without Sam Ryder in it, just because he's going to be... I mean, I'm going to gravitate towards him by building normal lineups anyways. I'm probably going to keep... I, I don't want Neesmith either. Just a reminder, if I don't see any new lineups here in the next... Or lineup considerations in the next, say, three minutes, we'll, we'll call the stream... Uh, good, and that's fine. Good luck to you as well, man. Uh, I like this one. Xander, Scott, Thigala, Hodges, Hall, and Kevin Yu. Oh, maybe I don't. I don't care for Hodges, and I guess I don't really care for Harry Hall either. Nothing like getting burned by Harry Hall two weeks in a row. That'd be that'd be the worst. Fowler, Scott, Thigala, Hubbard, Taylor, Moore, Kevin, you. Our first Hubbard sighting. I like that. Probably don't care much for Taylor Moore, but hey. I'll add Taylor Moore to this one. That's fine. I do like Kevin Yu. Like for a 6K range, I do like Kevin Yu. Where are you at, Taylor Moore? What the hell? Ricky Fowler, Adam Scott, the Gala, Spawn, Montgomery. Okay, I like that one too. All right, two more lineups, and I think we're calling it a night. Interesting. Is this the one we just built? Oh, that was a Sung J Adam Scott one with Keegan Bradley. This one's with Sahithagala uh, and Ricky Fowler, but it has basically those three guys. I like that. It's a good one. It's one good one to end on. Ricky Fowler, by the way, showing up a ton with Adam Scott. I actually don't mind Ben Taylor, especially in a lineup like this. I think that's fine. Let's see what a Ricky Fowler list lineup would look like. Give me a different 10k golfer, please. Xander, good. Lots of hey, this lineup here with Mackenzie Hughes and Justin Lauer, I'm I'm for it. I am for it. Uh, I'm going to do one more lineup, and I don't want to see Sahith Thigala in it. 
Rose says, likewise, we spot we're going to win some big bucks. Just a matter of time. I agree, dude. We, we've been really close. Like, not only I, but a lot of the people here uh, have had very close weeks. I think Ryan, big Colts fan, he, he jumps in here every once in a while. He's had a couple takedowns, so... Um, I think we're doing all right. 10, 9, 8, 7, 7, 6. That's a good one. Lots of Akshay Batia, JJ Spawn. I don't mind that though. Like at this event, I want golfers like them in my lineups. So I want to kick out Batia. I don't want to, I mean, I like Batia, but I, I don't want too much of him. And we can kick out Mac Hughes. That's fine. Xander Scott spawn. Ooh, Dylan Wu shows up. Okay, so I don't want spawn in my lineups then. Gee, I do like that one. <laughs> I don't want to play a lot of spawn, but there are some spawn lineups that I, I, you know, I could see this one doing pretty well. So one more good one without spawn. Without the the normal ones that show up, so I think I think we're good. I think we'll see something new here, and maybe we'll break it, but we don't. Sam Stevens, uh, I mean, we haven't seen a lot of Sam Stevens lineups built tonight. I think this is the first one, but I'm cool with not. Here's something different. Oh, dude, I wouldn't mind it without Keith Mitchell. Trying to get that last good one. I like Cam Champ. There we go. Something different. Justin Suh, Hoagie, Callum Tarin, who he can score well. And David Lingmurth. There we go. Do I end the, li the, the stream with a David Lingmurth lineup? I want to do one more. Just to get Lingmurth out of there. Sungjae Scott, Bradley, Kitayama, Montgomery, Davis, Riley. That's a good one. Okay, cool. That's good enough. No new, no new uh, requests on here. No one's even in the chat, so we can end it. All right, everyone. Thank you all for participating on the chat. Uh, within the chat, thank you all for watching. We're gonna end this stream. Just. Uh, there are giveaways that I run. Check the beginning of the stream out. You can find the giveaways there, but I'm just going to bid you all adieu. Thank you for watching. Please leave a like, comment, subscribe on your way out. And I'll see you in the next one. All right, bye.